Okay, this is a quick video to explain um, the solution to the LCD problem that we were having with the JG Aurora A5S and A1 motherboard. It turns out this is actually a hardware problem, and that's why I'm making this video to show the solution. So what I found out through a lot of mucking around was if I actually just touched this top left pin here, which is actually the, um, the CS pin on the motherboard, on the LCD board, if I just touched that pin, the picture would instantly correct. I found that I could even um, use a single, like a jumper wire, not connected to anything else, and just touch that pin, and the picture would correct. I then also found that if I put my finger over some traces on the back of the LCD, the picture would also would improve. Um, this led me to um, discover that this is actually seems to be an EMI problem. I haven't yet got the oscilloscope out to demonstrate the um, effectiveness. If you want me to do that down the track, leave a comment and I'll. Um, try to show the problem with the oscilloscope another time, but um, this is just a really quick fix. I found that all I needed to do was put some um, aluminium shielding tape. I'll put a link in the description of where you can buy this stuff, just to shield the traces from these pins here that go over to the LCD. Um, it's quite a high data rate, and there's a lot of opportunity for these signals to receive interference, and this shielding should really help those um, help the signal integrity be maintained, um, especially once we put this into a real printer and we have all the EMI from the stepper motors, etc, etc. Um, so I, I first tried just by adding this foil here and that worked successfully. I then took the foil off and I tried adding uh, shielding to the long um, multi-pin cable that runs between the motherboard and the LCD and that also resolved the problem perfectly. So doing either one of these solutions fixes the problem. Um, however, I thought, well, probably better to do both, so I've kept the foil on there and on the um, and on this cable as well. Adding the foil to the cable, I think, is the better solution because that will also help with the signal, signal integrity from um, while reading data off the SD card um, because you have all this data going to the LCD and also going from the SD card back to the motherboard. So I think the better quality signal we can get between the LCD and the motherboard, the, the better that is. So that's, that was the solution. I'll, I'll show you it working now. Okay, we're back. So I've got the moment, I've got the motherboard plugged in, being powered off USB from a computer. And if we go over, we can see that the um, LCD is working beautifully. What this is, this is a very clever little hack that someone put together for the um, MKS uh, Robin motherboard. And what it does, it takes a standard um, Marlin black and white LCD and then uh, basically tries to display that on the 320 by 240 TFT LCD. So you can see it's black and white, it looks, it looks slightly blue here, but all it's doing is showing the regular Marlin screen in black and white in this little center region of the screen. Now there's some additional modifications that I'm really hoping to get going, which lets you use the touch screen as virtual buttons to control like a virtual rotary dial that you might see on other um, uh, Marlin printers. Because at the moment, the touchscreen, Marlin is not designed to be compatible with the touchscreen interface. So this is a sort of a hack to let us use regular Marlin, but still make use of the TFT LCD without having to add and hack on extra buttons. So I'd recommend um, if you want to look, at, look into using the um, uh, community firmware, I, I've been working with a member called Roberto on the JG Forum, who's been absolutely amazing. He's done fantastic work solving some problems that I got stuck on, and he's really pushed pushed everything forward amazingly. Um, I reckon we'll probably have a real firmware working within about two or week, two weeks or so, maybe sooner, maybe later. Um, if you want to um, join us and try this firmware out, you want to buy two things. The first being you want to buy some aluminium shielding tape. I'll put a link below in the description. And you also want to buy one of these ST-Link programmers. Um, we also will put out a firmware that doesn't need this, but these are really cheap. They're like $4, and these are essential. These will let you reflash the firmware if something goes wrong. So if, say, you do an update via the SD card, and everything goes wrong, and the printer's bricked, these ST-Link programmers will let you reprogram the original firmware or the custom firmware um, onto the motherboard. And this top header here is what will be used for that. Um, the programming pinout I put on the forum, um, I'll put a link to the forum firmware discussion page below, um, but it's quite a straightforward process. 
Um, so yeah, I recommend if you want to get involved and start dabbling with the firmware on the A5S and A1, get yourself some shielding tape and get yourself a programmer and hold hold your horses and we'll, we'll get some firmware goodness to you soon. Anyway, that was a quick video, um, give you an update on the status of the A5S custom firmware. Thanks and bye.